Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make 10 plus arcade build hacks that you can use to make your very own arcade. The first thing we will make is a whack-a-mole machine. So if we begin by placing a row of one, two, three yellow concrete extending up from the ground and another row to the right of that, and then extend the bottom out by one, two, three, one, two, three towards us. On the ends of our row, place a tripwire hook on the left and a button on the right. We are going to place a couple of birch signs on the top of the machine. One is going to display the score, which I just want to write the word score in there. And then underneath, I just like to place a bunch of dashes. It just seems to make this look a little bit better. And we can also actually write whack-a-mole if we do so choose as well in the second sign. The next thing that we are going to do is place a couple of creeper heads. You can also substitute these for something else on the actual machine itself with item frames on the remaining spaces to look as though that we have different holes that the creeper heads can jump in and out of. Now all we're missing is the mallet which can be made using an end rod pointing up from the floor, red chalker box on top, and there we go. That is our whack-a-mole machine. Next, we have a claw machine. Begin by placing a red concrete on the ground. Right of that, an upside-down quartz stairs. Right of that, a red concrete. I want you to place an upside-down stair in front of the left red concrete and two red concretes right of the stair. We are then going to place whatever prize we would like to have for our machine. So I am once again going to go with the creeper head. And then we are going to build up glass on the outside of the shape that we've made. We're going to place one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three, just like this. So the only thing now is we want to place an open fence gate above the creeper head. Place a chain above this to give us this effect. And then we are going to place a sea lantern above the chain. And then red concrete around the sea lantern to close the machine. Something else that we can do to add detail to this is place a lever in front of the machine, right of the upside down stair, and a stone button right of the lever. If you aren't happy with how this looks, if you are able to, we can dig into the wall behind the machine. Now, this is completely dependent upon whether you can actually do this without making this look weird. We can dig into the wall behind the machine, make the sides of the machine red so that it looks as though that it is part of the case. And then you can make the center either white or a different contrast material. So let's just grab calcite for the sake of having a contrasting block and you could have that. Or you could make the entire back of the machine red just to give you a couple of different options. Although I will say I do think that the back of the machine being completely red does actually work quite well. Now we are going to make an arcade machine or an arcade cabinet. These can cover several different kinds of games so you have to use a little bit of imagination. Begin by placing a purple concrete block against a wall and extend it two rows up, one, two, one row forwards. Take the bottom and extend two rows forwards, one, two. Place a button in front of this, a lever above the block, a painting inside of the machine. Feel free to keep swapping these until you're happy. And then we are simply going to attach a sign to the top of the machine. And once again, we are just going to write score and add a bunch of dashes. And there you have the simplest arcade machine that you could ever make. And of course, feel free to change color and also change the paintings. Next, we are going to play a racing game, specifically the kind where you would like sit in a pretend car seat and you would race around a track or something similar to that. So, we are going to begin by placing a row of four red concrete in a row. One, two, three, four. 
we're going to extend the sides up on the left and right and then place alternating black and white concrete across the top of the machine. I then want you to place the opposite blocks in front of those, so black in front of white and white in front of black. The screen for this is going to be set here and that's actually quite a nice painting for the actual screen. Left and right of the screen we are going to have item frames and minecarts in those item frames to hopefully kind of set the scene. In front of the left center red concrete we're going to place a, a flipped down oak trap door to kind of represent a steering wheel and a button to the right of it. We're then going to extend the bottoms, bottoms of the machine, the bottom two corners outwards, one two and one two. It might be an idea to destroy inside of this and re-floor the floor with something else. So this could be a multitude of things actually, and I've only just considered this, but maybe just some cyan terracotta or maybe kind of like a road looking material might look quite nice. We need to have a lever. This can act as a gear stick or a handbrake or use your imagination. And we are simply just going to need a stair to look like a seat. Either quartz or the blackstone stair looks quite good, but regardless of that, this is what the machine will end up looking like. Next, we are going to make a dance machine. To make this, we are going to place one, two, three purple concretes across this back wall, extend them up by two rows, place a note block in front of the bottom left and bottom right blocks, place a purple concrete in between, item frame in front, iron trap door in the item frame, purple banner in front. Now we have to place paintings. My specific preference, I kind of like that actually, my specific preference would be two of the Pinocchio and one of the guy that looks like Cloud from Final Fantasy VII. Or, I kind of like it with all of the Pinocchio. It kind of looks like he's, he's kind of like walking in, in motion or dancing. So I, I kind of like that. Well, anyway, once you've made your decision, we are going to have a look and see if iron trap doors on top of this make it look a little bit better. And I can tell you that it doesn't make it look worse, which is a plus. And in front of the machine, we have to place the actual dance floor. So this is going to be made using pink glazed terracotta as it is effectively an arrow, the same arrows that one would step on in in beat with the actual song that's being played that you're dancing to and they want to be placed in every single direction from back left and right and then in between these we are going to place light gray shulker boxes now on the end here we have like a rail to hang on to which is something that I've never needed to use while playing this game as I'm not good enough, except to give myself a little rest, I guess. <laughs> and we're going to place an end rod on the ends of the machine with string in between the end rods and black carpet on top of the end rods and in between. And then we have our dance machine. Now we're going to make a basketball game. Begin by placing a row of five black concrete. One, two, three, four, five. Extend the left and right sides up by using three smooth quartz. One, two, three, one, two, three. Then place sideways facing smooth quartz stairs on top of the smooth quartz. Place white concrete extending inwards from both of the stair with a target block in between. Place smooth quartz slab on top of the three blocks and then white concrete underneath everything to fill in the center of our shape. We then want to place a web underneath the target block and we now want to extend the bottom of the machine outwards. Place a row of one, two, three, four black concrete extending outwards from the bottom two corners of the machine. Place three rows of yellow concrete starting from the back of the machine extending forwards with an upside down smooth quartz stair in the center of the final row with yellow concrete either side. We're now going to build up rows of three iron bars 
on the left and right side of the machine as high as the actual smooth quartz, but not the smooth quartz there, like this. And we are going to do this on both sides. So now that we have done that, we are going to grab a few other materials. So item frame, iron trap door, stone button, oak signs and orange concrete powder. Plus I'm going to grab a pumpkin because I want to give you guys a second option. So we want to place an item frame left of the upside down stair with an iron trap door inside of it. Right of this, a stone button. We want to place oak signs around the cobweb. So this will be the hoop. There we go. We're going to place iron trap doors underneath and in front of the hoop. So if you was to throw a basketball and you didn't actually get in the hoop and it didn't come down, the this is basically to stop it like just bouncing back right at your face. So like if it just bounces off, you don't really get the the ball immediately. It's kind of to um, stop stop you like getting extra time and extra shots, but that might be a little bit too realistic for you. So it's up to you whether or not you want to include this, but it's, it's on pretty much like every machine that I've looked at. Okay, all we've got to do now is figure out what we want to use as the basketball and where you want to place it. I quite like to place mine just in front of this upside down stair. I also like orange concrete powder or orange wool because it has a little bit of a texture which basketballs do. But a pumpkin, if you forget that it is a fruit and or vegetable, I actually don't know which, uh, then it kind of sort of looks like a basketball, doesn't it? Except for the fact that, you know, it's a pumpkin. So, you know, you've kind of got to figure out what you think looks best. Next, we are going to make a throwing game. So begin by placing a yellow concrete on the ground, two red concrete to the right of it, and then a yellow on the end. Extend the yellow and red concretes each up by two. Then extend the red concrete forwards using spruce planks, one, two, and perhaps even three rows. Then I want you to place two rows of red concrete in front of the rows of yellow, and then yellow concrete in front of the rows of red. We now want to place blue concrete in front of the bottom of the game, and then we are going to place flower parts in front of the back of the machine. We now want to place on top of this smooth quartz stairs on the left and right sides, upside down smooth quartz stair in between, and then smooth quartz slabs on top of this to kind of make a curved shape and we can even add an extra row of red concrete just at the back and maybe even more flower parts or you may find that it might be better to extend these stairs backwards just to keep the shape. So the next thing that we're going to do is we can add a sign here so maybe even um, on the left side or the right side, we can have just the score once again. So just write score in a birch item frame with dashes underneath. And we can add, depending upon how you want to build this machine, let me explain. We are going to grab item frames, iron trap doors, crimson buttons, stone buttons, and also a bow. So in front of the machine, we want to have a stone button and an item frame with an iron trap door. For those curious, the item frame with the iron trap door, I imagine to be where tickets or, you know, excess coins or what have you may come out of the machine. And the buttons, of course, to actually start the game. Well, 
You can make this in two different ways. So you could make this if we were to also grab the arrows. We could have it so that it's kind of a shooting game. So the idea would be if we were to have, say, like an, a bow and arrow just on the machine that we are meant to shoot the parts. But this requires a tad more imagination. If you line up some crimson buttons, then those could be balls that we are meant to throw at the parts, which will either knock them down or, you know, just light up or what have you. And that is the game. I think that this game may perhaps work better with the bow configuration, especially if we have an item frame with an arrow in it, and the idea would be to hit all of the parts, especially if you're a better marksman than I am. So that is two iterations of the game, and if you change the colors, you could actually just use it as two machines. The next game that we are going to make is a motorcycle racing game. This is similar to the car game that we made earlier, but with motorcycles, so it's automatically cooler. Begin by placing a row of five red concrete on the ground. One, two, three, four, five. We then want to extend the left and right sides up by two. One, two, one, two. Then place alternating black and white concretes above the two rows of red. Extend the black and white concretes forwards using the opposite block. And now we are going to fill the screen in using a mixture of paintings. You're going to want to make sure that the paintings at the very least look plausible for a game screen. So something, some paintings that are more like this are who, which are a little bit more nondescript are probably for the best instead of, you know, the ones with creeper faces in and such. So now that we've got a satisfactory set of paintings, we are going to place in front of the center of the machine, a strip of white concrete. Dig into the ground, one, two, three, four, five and replace this using white concrete. Left and right of this dig into the ground and replace it using cyan terracotta. Left and right of the cyan terracotta we are going to place strips of smooth quartz slabs. Now on the strip of white concrete leaving a gap of one from the machine we want to place a black concrete, blue concrete, a rail specifically facing towards the blue concrete and then behind this a black concrete. We want to place a minecart on the rail and we specifically want it to face that way which is why we were specific about the rail. And then all we have to do is grab a heavy weighted pressure plate which we will place on top of the two wheels, the black concretes, stone buttons on the sides of the black concretes and levers on the sides of the blue concretes. And there you have your motorcycle racing game. You may want to extend this outwards. It depends how much room you have for your machine. But I would always recommend extending the cyan terracottas and the white concretes outwards as well. Just don't make it all cyan terracottas because the idea is that this kind of looks like a street if you were to look at it. But there we go, our motorcycle racing game. Next up, a simple slot machine. Place two concretes extending up from the ground. I say concretes because you can literally make this any color. I'm going for light blue. Place an upside down smooth quartz stair right of the lower concrete and a light blue concrete on top of the stair. A birch sign in front of the upside down stair and a lever right of the concrete above it. I want to place a single one by one painting in front of the block that has the lever attached. Left of this, an item frame with something inside of it that resembles money or tokens or just you know, something that you would win from the actual machine. So, because this machine's blue, I'm going to go with diamonds, and I think that it helps to accentuate it a little bit. If it was yellow, I might use gold, and if it were green, I might use emeralds. So, on top of the machine, we are simply going to place back-to-back -back smooth quartz stair, and there we have our machine. If you like, you can even add a seat to it. 
so for a C I would recommend an end rod with a carpet undone. There we go, simple slot machine. Next we are going to make a ski ball machine. Begin by placing three orange concrete in a row, and another row on top. Place a target block on top of the center orange concrete with concretes left and right. Add an additional row of orange concrete on top. Place a sign above the target block and we are simply going to write score with dashes underneath. Then we are going to place a smooth quartz block underneath and in front of the target. And then another one in front of that. Then place a smooth quartz slab in front of the lower half of the outward smooth quartz. And then in front of and below the smooth quartz slab, a smooth quartz stair to create a gradient. This would also be possible by simply placing an additional couple smooth quartz slabs, but then that makes the machine longer, which you may or may not like. We want to cover the left and right sides of the smooth quartz block. So from the bottom, we extend forwards until we are left and right of the slab. And at the top, we simply just want to extend orange concrete so that we have no sticky up or out smooth quartz slabs like this. Then we want to place parts. Parts are going to act as targets. We have the target block, but we also want parts at the top. So the idea would be that you throw the ball, or kind of like slide the ball, bowl the ball, ski the ball, and of course it will like pop up and it will drop into one of these parts, hopefully. So in front of the machine, we are going to place a sign at the end, and this is just to stop the ball rolling back down. In front of the left side of the sign, we are going to place an item frame with an iron trap door. And then we are going to place the balls. So these are going to be any button blocks that you like. I'm just going to use black buttons. So the idea would be, obviously these are balls, ski them up, collect your score, collect your tokens. Easy peasy. Next, we are going to make an air hockey table. Begin by placing three white concrete in a row. One, two, three. Extend the white concrete one row inwards. Add a row of red concrete. And then two more rows of white concrete. Left and right of the red concrete row, place birch fence and extend them up by two rows. Place birch fence gate in between the tops of the birch fence row. Place an item frame with a red concrete in front and behind the center row. And you may also choose to add score as well. So once again, a birch sign with score on the opposing sides of the, here we go, on the opposing sides of the item frame looks pretty good. Or you might prefer it without. It's completely up to you. You could have score on this side, and then if you wanted to even it out, then you could have, of course, you know, an actual score. Or, you might prefer, that it is simply nice and clean. I'm going to leave that up to you to figure out. On the ends of the table on both sides, we want an item frame with an iron trap door, with then a white banner in front or above, you guys get the idea, covering the item frame. Then birch signs on the left and right side, and that pretty much concludes what we've got to do to the end of the table. Item frame, iron trap door, white banner, birch sign, birch sign, just like that. All we have to do now is make the puck and also the things that you would use to hit the puck, I don't know what they're called, so... The levers are going to be used to make the puck hitting devices, which I think are quite convincing. And then it's up to you what you want the puck to be. So usually these things are brightly colored and maybe like red or blue or what have you. So I'm going to leave it up to you, but I quite like the crimson button, but you could use any button that you like. And there is your air hockey table. And last but not least, what is the point in playing in an arcade and gathering a bunch of tokens or tickets if you've got nowhere to spend them? So we are going to make 
an actual place to spend your tokens. Begin by placing one, two, three blue terracottas extending out from a wall. Extend across, one, two, three, four, and then back towards a wall. You may want to get behind this desk, so do feel free to leave an empty space that you are able to walk in and out of. On the left and right sides of this, I'm going to place two lanterns to help light up this area a little bit to draw a little bit of attention. An item frame on the desk with a paper to look as though that we are actually like throwing some tokens or tickets down on the ground or on the counter actually. And then we're going to place iron trap doors in between and above the two lanterns that we have. And then we can place in front of these signs. So for instance, we can have different ticket levels. So we could have like 10 tickets will get us this particular set of, you know, fun stuff. We can have, you know, 20 tickets. And then we can have like 50 tickets for like the really cool stuff. And it's up to you what you put up here. You could put item frames with stuff in. You could just simply use like toys air quotes like I am, using heads and skulls. So maybe like under 10 tickets, maybe you just get like, I don't know, a skeleton skull and a wither skull. Under 20 tickets, maybe you get like a zombie head and a creeper head. And maybe for the 50 tickets, we have like Steve and we have a dragon head. So something like that is pretty cool. But as I said, item frames with like diamond swords and stuff in would be pretty cool as well. And if we wanted to, we could actually have the prizes like in a chest underneath if we did so choose. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is our last and possibly most important arcade build hack. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I do hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.